Well, certainly the private banks have had the most benefit from quantitative easing and from the availability of all of this money because without that, they, they would have failed in greater number. And so to the extent to which they were provided subsidies really by the central banks, they've done quite well. And ultimately, that money has enabled them to, to lend more to corporations relative to people and so forth. So we're kind of in the middle of a, se a second bubble. It's not in mortgages like it was before the 2008 crisis. It's more like in the corporate market. It's more like in the emerging markets and so forth. So we are still playing this out. And the private banks have been able to do quite well. In the last quarter, they had record quarters. Um, one might argue they might have had that anyway. But it certainly helps to have, for example, in the U.S., four and a half trillion dollars of Fed money behind them, or, or in the U.K., eight hundred. Yeah. Billion uh, dollars worth, or six hundred billion pounds worth of, of, of money to help, and yeah. so that benefit has gone. And it's not so much a conspiracy as just what's happened. Yeah, but but I mean, at the heart of the idea of collusion is the sense that there is a cabal of individuals like the Illuminati or the Bilderberg Society <laughs> who sat the bell ones. exactly <laughs> who, who sat down and deliberately said we will enrich ourselves by pretending that we're doing this in the the interests of of the, of the greater community. Because ultimately, if we look at the history of the global economy, we progressively have just cycles of boom and bust, regardless of how, uh, how much we try to prevent that happening by understanding our own economic history. So is this just not the... I mean, the counterfactual is that it could have been a whole lot worse with a lot more people losing their jobs and the global economy being a lot more disrupted if the central banks hadn't stepped in with emergency measures. Well, I, I think the key there is emergency measured because this, this all occurred 10 years ago and, and the collaboration or collusion is something that's happened over 10 years. So if we had just been uh, in an emergency condition, then it's been a 10-year emergency, which is kind of longer than a regular economic cycle would be. And so, so that's part of it. And, and it's also the narrative has been that it would help growth and it would help individuals. The reality is numerically it, it has helped markets more and it has helped banks more. So whether that was decided from the beginning or whether that's just kind of what's happened over this unprecedented period of quantitative easing, those are what the numbers bear out. Naomi, do, do you talk about house prices at all? I think particularly in the UK, some other places, to my mind, one of the biggest effects of this collusion has been to drive house prices to crazy high levels and price a lot of younger people out of the market. Do you think that's right? Um, that, that's very true because what, what's happened is when there's been this wash of sort of money into the system, it goes into the banks first, it then goes into the stock markets because that's easy because rates are low, it then goes into higher yielding bonds because rates are low, it goes into the housing market because the availability of money for the more expensive houses is, is so much more abundant than it is for, for young people or than it is for people getting mortgages at sort of a lower level, which just sort of creates this inequality as well in the housing market, which, which does price people out, as opposed to real growth at the bottom, which would have allowed people... Um, to come into the market at multiple levels. Yeah. Um, Nemi, um, I hate to go to the last chapter, but do you want to give us a sneak preview of what happened? I mean, th there is going to be a big reveal about what's going to happen, and I don't want all our viewers to not buy the book, of course. Uh, but, but, but the point that you said and earlier on, and I guess this is a part of your ending, is you said we're in the second bubble, we're in the middle of the second bubble as well. Does this end really badly? I think it does. I think central banks continue to do what they're doing as long as they can, which is why the Fed might say they're hiking rates and the ECB will say, well, no, we're not. Growth's not really so great. Bank of England, no, growth is actually lower than we expected. Um, and so that's going to continue to happen for a while. But the reason there would be, there could be, and there probably will be, a crash that's bigger than it was before the 2008 financial crisis is because the markets and all of the financial assets in them are elevated um, by $21 trillion of central banks sort of subsidies and, and conjured money and so any height is higher now than it would have been before the financial crisis and that's from the height at which we are starting um, the fall from and so that's the problem when, when things burst when these bubbles burst it is from a larger size hey everybody it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi thanks for stopping by now to watch more you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen and don't forget to subscribe